uh, which is uh, how do we organize for and win? Um, there's been a lot of uh, debate, obviously, about what to best do in the face of this, this mass voter and party suppression. Um, and like I was saying earlier, you know, there's people that will, will sometimes say, uh, swear off electoralism and say, um, you know, I, I don't want to be involved in any political elect elections campaign at all. I want to do, you know, direct actions or whatever. Um, and then there's, some, there'll be some other people who will focus, uh, even harder on the campaigns and say, you know, I got to put all my effort into the campaigns to overcome these challenges. Um, and, and they're both getting, I think a little bit, uh, stuck in the, in the weeds, right. Um, because we need a, um, a broader, more general organizing strategy because uh, we're not just creating a traditional political party here. We're trying to build a broad mass movement here, a mass working class party um, that's going to uh, bring about, you know, significant systemic changes and not just, you know, small reforms. So we have to think, I think, uh, uh, bigger and more long term. Um, and that doesn't mean that, of course, there isn't a place for those uh, those things, but just as part of a, a bigger strategy. And, and to be honest, you know that uh, that bigger strategy is is still an active area of debate, not even just among the Green Party, but just among uh, socialists and, and the left in general. Because the the fact is, global capitalism has not been toppled anywhere in the world yet, right? Um, it it still persists. And while we've made important gains for, you know, uh, you know, civil rights and, and, and justice and stuff, we, we still haven't actually toppled capitalism yet. We still haven't actually replaced capitalism with a more democratic socialist um, structure. So there's ongoing debate on how to best do this. But I think, you know, most Greens can agree that we, we, um, we, we need a, a diversity. We need a mix of tactics here that, it, that involves all of it. So that includes um, supporting uh, workers' unions. Um, there's a lot of progress that can be made in, uh, in workplaces by organizing workers, but that should also be connected to uh, community organizations that are focused on uh, mutual aid and uh, direct actions that actually build new grassroots democratic institutions um, that, that handle issues that local governments are not, for example. Um, and then combine all those things with uh, electoral campaigns that can do multiple things, that electoral campaigns can bring more um, public attention to issues. So, for example, we were talking earlier about how the Green New Deal started with the Green Party. Um, we had Howie Hawkins in 2010 start talking about the Green New Deal um, in this governor campaign, and then it was adopted by Jill Stein in her campaigns for uh, presidential campaigns in 2012 and 2016. And you could see an evolution there where the people in New York and then eventually through the country as Jill Stein uh, started campaigning on it nationally, um, more and more people started to talk about the Green New Deal. And it became a big issue, I think, in 2016. I remember CNN gave uh, Jill Stein a town hall and she talked about a Green New Deal. She talked about... Um, things like forgiving student debt. And all of a sudden those were conversation points. All of a sudden those were things that Democrats felt like they had to respond to. Um, so, you know, elections, uh, electoral campaigns can be uh, successful even if you don't necessarily win someone into office because they can jumpstart the important public discussion that needs to happen to organize so that you can actually win and solidify those things in the future. But of course, like we were saying earlier, Green's can and do often win, especially at local levels where policy can be changed uh, relatively easily and has been changed and made very important uh, changes in the communities. We just need to do these things more broadly. You know, we, we, you know, we need more candidates to run more local elections to, ha to have those good things happen in more places um, and com combine that with the mutual aid, combine that with the union organizing and all. And all of this together uh, will build a strong movement. And we, we hope that the Green Party is kind of the, um, the, the umbrella organizing uh, place for all of these different movements to come together. And especially for um, you know, unions and uh, community movements and things like that to have the Green Party as their, their political arm, right? 
so that we're all working together toward the bigger uh, picture here. So this, this is an ongoing debate and ongoing strategy. Um, one thing you can read uh, to learn more about this strategy is Howie Hawkins' book, The Case for an Independent Left Party from the Bottom Up. There's a picture of it on the left, but you can get that from HowieHawkins.us, uh, um, the, the website. Um, and it, it's a very short ebook, but it's, it, um, it's packed full of information about the history of independent left parties and why that has always been um, a, a key component of movements that have won change in history and why it's the thing that we need to do again today. Um, do you have anything to add, Chris, or uh, is there a question? Yeah, I mean, the key thing, and you know, and, and it, so the Green Party strategy debates, right? And most people tend to go into debates wanting to come away with, you know, a winner or a decision. Um, and the reality from my perspective is we need to come out of the green strategy debates within all of the above tactics, right? We need a multiplicity of tactics right now. And the entire left needs a multiplicity of tactics, right? If you look, you know, to, not that electoralism is a, you know, necessarily an accurate, accurate reminder of, or an accurate indicator of the power of the left in the United States. But if all left parties in presidential elections combined, the Greens would make 90, up 90% of the results and we still wouldn't you know, be crossing a threshold of more than a percent or two, right? So none of us has figured this out. No one's figured out the key to organizing an independent left party in, in the US. Um, so we need to keep, keep up multiplicity of tactics, right? And we need, and this goes all the way down to the, you know, the local level, like looking at what, we, what you know, these bullet points that Garrett has um, makes me think of in 2012, I had a friend and he wanted to organize, he wanted to get into workplace organizing, specifically in fast food and service industry. Um, you know, and this is 10 years before we're seeing, you know, victories of it by Chris Smalls and the Amazon union, right? Um, this is before we're seeing Starbucks having a, a, a big role. This is a decade before the, the successes were coming when it was still pretty unthinkable. Um, trying to organize this. And, and frankly, the, the major unions had abandoned the idea, right? The, 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 there wasn't a big push by major unions to, to, to get the, the service industry unionized. And through our discussions, what he came away with was before he started to actually, you know, ha have try to get local restaurants to sign union cards, um, that's a big step. That's a big leap from zero. Right, which was where he was at in his organizing in his plan. He just wanted to do something, and so through our discussions, we realized, you know, we came away with the place for him to start was to form a community organization that advocated for something like city requirement of every business within city limits gives five paid sick days, something that wasn't required and something that most service employees didn't get. Um, so the, the the best way for him to start helping you know, do workplace uh, support was with a community organization. Um, and then once that, once that community organization wins, now you've got a base that can, and you've got organizers who have some experience. You've got people inside the restaurants who helped you make this win or get this win. And now those are your, your, organizer, your, your organizer workers, right? They can go, they can actually start having filing for union elections in their, in their Places and things like that, but you've got to build to it like everything else. Um, and when we do this kind of work, take Medicare for all again, for example, right? 90% of Democrats, I mean, 50% of Republicans, 60 plus percent of Americans support Medicare for all. The, the work of winning the populace is, is done. But because we don't have an independent uh, political outlet that supports that, we don't have it. Right? So we don't necessarily need more community organizations advocating for, for universal health care. We need you know, independent candidates on the ballot winning and, and, change, and moving the, the goalposts on it, you know, kind of shifting the tide. So we got to have it all, right? If your movement wants to achieve its goals, um, then you need to have that electoral wing. Um, during the 2020 campaign, how he, like all the green presidential candidates was asked, you know, how are you going to pull off your agenda with a hostile Congress? And, you know, how his response was always, well, if I won the election, 
that means tens of millions of people voted for me. And I hope that they're going to show up in the streets as a movement to press Congress into passing our policies, right? So mm -hmm. if you do get that lucky one, not that it's luck, right? Rarely do campaigns win by luck. They win by organizing. But when you do win that green campaign and they're surrounded by hostile, you know, corporate party, um, you know, peers in their legislative seat, uh, it's absolutely essential that you can then turn out people and apply public pressure uh, to give weight to your ideas if you don't have a, a whole slate to back you. Um, so, you know, I think that I really think that when we have these green strategy debates, we need to be really having a multiplicity of tactics centered in an all of the above type of view. Um, because the other area that work that helps is it gives people multiple areas to get engaged, right? If not everybody wants to, uh, you know, get engaged, go canvassing and engage in electoral work, some people are more interested in the direct action and that's okay. And some people don't want to go to a protest. They want to work behind the scenes to build, you know, an organization and that's okay. Um, so by having multiple, this multiplicity of tactics, we can, uh, make sure that we're offering multiple ways for, for people to engage and for organizers to engage in multiple ways that we can uh, kind of build and wield our power. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's the way we deal with, um, you know, various forms of, of ballot suppression and voter suppression and uh, suppression of uh, protesters, even, you know, the, um, uh, the, it, there's power in a mass movement that can stand up to those things. So that's, uh, we organize on all the fronts we can. So, um, so let's kind of add on to what we said before. The Green Party is both an activist organization and an electoral party, but it's also a multi-tendency party that we're, you know, we invite in folks with, uh, with different ideas on what the strategy should be because we do need this, this multi-pronged approach to, to building this uh, mass uh, leftist party. So, you know, when we talk about eco-socialism, we mean that in a very uh, broad sense, like I was talking about with the four pillars and, and not like some particular, you know, very sectarian sort of thing, right? Um, you know, uh, we work with um, uh, many different uh, strategies uh, toward our goal. So electoralism, direct action, union organizing, all of the above. 